Hello, welcome to The Belfry. My name is Andy Baker and I am the Associate Minister here at The Belfry. Uh, this morning it is my privilege to be leading this service. Uh, it's great to see you from wherever you're joining us, whether you're part of The Belfry Church family, uh, whether you're joining us from elsewhere in the country or in the world, uh, or whether you're joining us for the first time. A big special welcome to you. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about what's going to happen in our service in a second. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I'm going to copy Tom in what he did last week when he led us. Tom gave us the opportunity to share the service uh, on social media to see if anyone wants to join in this morning. Uh, church is always supposed to be open for anyone to join. So we'd love to do that this morning. So we know um, that loads of you are happy to share services and events that we do with friends and family. Uh, but we also know that during lockdown, uh, a much higher percentage of you have uh, done this via social media. Uh, so it's easier than ever to invite someone to church. So we're going to have a couple of minutes where we're not going to do anything, we're not going to say anything, you're not going to miss out. Uh, and what we're encouraging you to do uh, is head to social media, to Facebook, to Instagram, uh, either share this video um, or share a little status update uh, to say what you're doing and to invite anyone to come with you. You can do that generally, uh, you can do that specifically to people. So You've got a couple of minutes, go for it. Welcome back and well done you for sharing. Uh, also, if you're joining us because someone just shared this with you, a big special welcome to The Belfry. My name's Andy Baker uh, and I'll be leading us through this service today. Uh, the service is the final one of our current series looking at the unsung heroes uh, of the uh, Bible. Uh, and so the, the, the person, the character that we're going to be looking at today uh, is Philip. Uh, and so in a second, we're going to have some worship. Uh, we're going to have an action song right at the beginning. And then Tom is going to lead us uh, in worship. Uh, we're also going to have a reading, which will be done by Aidan Smith, uh, followed by a short talk uh, by our children's worker, Liz. So you've got all of that to look forward to. I'm going to pray right at the beginning. Uh, can I encourage you if you're not already stood up at home, stand up. I think it's so much easier to engage when you stood up. Uh, obviously, if you can't do that, I'm not pressuring you. Just stay where you are. Uh, but if you can, get up, stand up, uh, have a little stretch if you're getting a bit tired. Uh, and we're going to begin our service by committing the rest of our time to God. So Father God, uh, we bring before you our service. We bring before you our time. We ask that you would come by your spirit, that you would unite us together as brothers and sisters uh, as we participate in this act of worship of you. And we ask that all in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh 
trust is without more you walk upon the waters well you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever want my faith will be made strong in the presence of my Savior
Acts chapter 8 verses 3 to 8 and 26 to 40. But Saul tried to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged out the believers, both men and women, and threw them into jail. The believers who were scattered went everywhere, preaching the message. Philip went to the principal city in Samaria, where he preached the Messiah to the people there. The crowd paid close attention to what Philip said as they listened to him and saw the miracles that he performed. Evil spirits came out of me from many people with a loud cry, and many paralyzed and lame people were healed. So there was great joy in that city. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get ready and go south, to the road that goes from Jer Jerusalem to Gaza. So Philip got ready and went. Now Ethiopian Enruch, who was an important officer in charge of the treasury, of the queen of Ethiopia was just on his way home. He had been to Jerusalem to worship God and was going home in his carriage. As he rode along, he was reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over to that carriage and stay close to it. Philip ran over and heard him reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. He asked him, do you understand what you are reading? The official replied, How can I understand unless someone explains it to me? And he invited Philip to climb up and sit in the carriage with him. The passage of the scripture which he was reading was this, Like a sheep that is taken to be slaughtered, like a lamb that makes no sound when its wool is cut off, he did not say, say a word. He was humiliated and justice was denied to him. No one will be able to tell about his descendants, because his life on earth has come to an end. The official asked Philip, Tell me, of whom is the prophet saying this, of himself or of someone else? Then Philip began to speak. Starting from this passage of scripture, he told the good news about Jesus. As they travelled down the road, they came to a place where there was some water, and the official said, Here is some water. What is to keep me from being baptised? The official ordered the carriage to stop, and both Philip and the official went down into the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord took Philip away. The officials did not see him again, but continued on his way, full of joy. Philip found himself in Azotus, and he went on to Caesarea, and on the way he preached the good news in every town. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, I'm Liz Hunt. I'm the children and families worker here at the Belfry. Today we're continuing in our series looking at unsung heroes from the Bible, and, and the story that Aidan's just read to us is from Acts, and it's the story of a man called Philip. I confess that I always remember Philip as the man who tells someone about Jesus whilst he's riding in a chariot. If we were meeting in church as usual, I'd probably have got the children's groups to make models of chariots or to do some kind of chariot racing or something like that. Do you feel free to do those things at home, whatever age you are, if you'd like to? But what I've learned as I've looked at the story this week is that Philip did a lot more than just travel around in chariots. He was an unsung hero for lots of reasons, and I'm going to use these people and these models down here to help us to remember the different things that Philip did. You might have to use your imagination a little bit, some of these props, some of the proportions are a little bit out, but hopefully having some visuals will help you um, engage with the story and to learn about um, what Philip did and how we can learn from that story too. So firstly, at the beginning of today's passage, we hear about Philip telling people about Jesus. Now, just before the passage that Aidan read to us, we've been hearing about Saul destroying the churches, putting people in prison if they talked about Jesus. But Philip doesn't seem to be too bothered about this, about this potential threat to his life or the fact that he might be put in prison. He just goes on telling people about Jesus. And we're going to have three words in our talk today to help us think about this story. And the first word is the word say. Philip was willing to say things about Jesus, good things about Jesus. He was willing to tell people 
about Jesus, even though that was tricky, even though he had to be brave. I wonder if there's a place or a person where you need to say some good things about Jesus. It could be that you're about to go back to school in the next few weeks and you need to be telling your friends about Jesus. Maybe you've got a work colleague that you can talk to about Jesus. Maybe you've been getting to know your neighbours better in lockdown and now's the time to say that you're a Christian, to tell them about Jesus. Secondly, we read about Philip making people better through the Holy Spirit. He, he heals people. He prays for them and they get better. He commands evil spirits to leave them and the Holy Spirit helps him. We're told elsewhere in the Bible that we have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead at work in us through the Holy Spirit so we can do these amazing things that Philip was doing. We can pray for people and they get better. So is there someone that you can be praying for at the moment? Is there something that the Holy Spirit can help you to do? Maybe there's somebody that's sad and you need to go and do something to help them. Maybe they're unwell and you can help them or you can pray for them. Philip was willing to say things for Jesus. He was willing to do things for Jesus. And finally, we get to the part of the story today where the chariot comes in, where um, God tells Philip to go. He tells him to go to the desert and to talk to this man who's riding in a chariot and to tell him about God. I think that's amazing. I'm sure I would have probably asked, well, why do you want me to go there? Or will it be safe? Or what will I say? I might even have wondered if it was actually God telling me to go at all. But Philip listens to what the Holy Spirit is saying to him and he does it. He goes. He goes to the desert road. He meets this official, this important man, and he tells him what the Bible is saying about Jesus. And then Philip baptises him. After the man is baptised, Philip apparently disappears. God takes him away back to Jerusalem. But the Bible tells us that the official goes on his way full of joy because of what Philip said and did. So as we've journeyed through the story today, we've seen that Philip is willing to say things for Jesus. He's willing to do things for Jesus and he's willing to go where God has called him to go. So let's think about those words for us now. What do we need to say? What is God asking us to say? What is God asking us to do? Where is God asking us to go? If you're like me, all those things sound rather scary. But actually, as we've learned early on, earlier on, the Holy Spirit gives us power to enable us to do these things, to be brave, to tell people about Jesus to have God's power to heal people and to have the right words to say to people. We do need to be willing, like Philip, to say and to do and to go where God wants us to, to, to trusting that he is going to help us. So let's just pray about that now. Lord God, thank you for the story of Philip. Thank you for all the things that he said and did and the places he went to because you were with him. Please help us to trust you and to say things about Jesus, to do the things that you've asked us to do and to go the places, to the places that you want us to. Amen. We're now going to spend some time praying for our teachers and our young people and children as they head back to school in the coming days. So if you know any teachers personally or if you know young people or children, why don't you bring them to mind as we pray together? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the beginning of a new academic year and thank you for all the opportunities that that brings for our children, for our young people and for those who work in schools. Lord, we pray that as children go back, that you would be with them, that you'd be strengthening them. Lord, we pray that they wouldn't be anxious about the work that they've missed, but that their teachers would be able to encourage them and motivate them as they seek to catch up with, from all the disruption last year. Father, we pray for our teachers and our head teachers as they go back to school under new guidelines with new rules to follow. Lord, would you give them wisdom in how to implement them in their school? We pray that they would be um, able to keep everyone safe and that you would be preventing the spread of infection in our schools. 
Lord, we pray for the trainee teachers who had their training disrupted last year. We pray as they head to the classroom that they would be well supported and that you would be with them. And Father, we pray for our students and our young people who are transitioning this year, whether that's from primary school into secondary school or secondary school into sixth form or whatever transitions they're going through. Father, please would you be with them as they go through something uncertain and difficult in, in unusual times. And Father, we pray um, for those who are going back and not certain about what it's going to be like. Lord, would you give them all strength, whether they're young people or teachers? Would they know your hand over them? And would they know that you are with them wherever they go? Why don't we pray the words of the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for those really helpful prayers. I've got a few items of news for you before we finish with our final act uh, of worship. Uh, first off, I just want to point you towards our website, belfry.org. Uh, that will give you loads of information about how to connect with us as a church. Uh, there's information about events and services that we've been doing. You can link there to our Belfry morning prayer, which we're doing every day in the week. Uh, also, if you'd like to give either as a one-off donation uh, or you'd like to set up a direct debit, you can do that there, belfry.org forward slash giving. Also, just one thing I'd like to highlight on there is belfry.org forward slash groups. Uh, we have a number of groups, which we call Belfry groups, uh, that meet in the week for community, for fellowship, for encouragement, for Bible study, for prayer. Uh, these groups have been faithful all the way through lockdown, uh, with some members uh, emailing me just to say how important their groups have been. Uh, if you're not connected in to one of those groups and you would like to be or you'd like to ask some questions about that, you can do that at our webpage. Uh, these groups are so helpful for people to connect in with the life uh, and work of our church uh, and also to receive some pastoral support during this difficult time. Also to let you know today uh, we've not finished. Uh, this service will now be available for the rest of the day and indeed the week. Uh, we also have uh, a worship night which will be at eight o'clock and that will be on Facebook. Uh, if you're not uh, already if you haven't already liked our Facebook page then do that and you can then find the link uh, to that video when it goes live uh, on there also another way that we connect uh, is via our coffee zoom chats uh, we've been doing these all the way through the summer uh, and it's all together so if you'd like to do that uh, visit belfry.org forward slash coffee you can then pre-register um, or you can register then and there um, and we will send you a link with the password to get in. Uh, we do that for safeguarding because there will be under 18 year olds there and we want to make sure that everyone's safe. Uh, that is a good half hour uh, of getting to know people, chatting uh, and having a bit of a laugh. Um, finally, um, some of you may have seen in Friday news uh, that this week our youth and children's team um, have been tearing down uh, and getting us out of the storehouse uh, as the lease has run out. Uh, first off, we are incredibly grateful for all of our team who have been involved uh, in packing up uh, and moving out of that. You've done such an amazing job, so thank you for that. Uh, but also a massive thank you to the team that set up the storehouse. That building has been such a blessing to us. Uh, of course, it was all started uh, by Lee Kirkby, uh, our youth and children and families worker. Um, he uh, had the vision for this thing and with his team, uh, they created this incredible venue. Uh, we have plans afoot, uh, plans to uh, take a new building uh, and move in somewhere else uh, but that's not quite ready just yet but we wanted to take a little bit of time uh, just to celebrate everything that's happened uh, at the storehouse and for all the people that have been involved in its running so uh, I'm going to play this video uh, so you can watch that and celebrate with us uh, and we're going to have our final worship song straight after. Hi everyone I'm Liz I'm the children and families worker at the Belfry as lots of you will know, we've been moving out of the storehouse this week, which is our youth and children's centre, has been for um, 
several years. Um, it's been a bit strange moving out and packing all the boxes up, um, but we've done lots of reminiscing about things that we've done there and um, events that we've run and the different things that we've been able to do with our children and young people. And we know God's got great plans for us into the future and we look forward to seeing what those are. But for the time being, we've put together this video to show you uh, some of our memories and reflections on our time at the storehouse. And you might see some familiar faces from some of our previous teams as well. So enjoy. There have been so many amazing memories in this place. I came to be on the Belfry Youth Team at the beginning of 2016 uh, when we actually couldn't meet here because there had been the Boxing Day floods of 2015 and therefore we had to move out. And I was part of the team as we moved back in and it was just wonderful to, to see the excitement and to know that we were moving back home uh, to this venue. We've seen some amazing things happen here. Young people giving their lives to Jesus for the first time. The excitement on their faces as they see the applause in the rest of the room from their family at Belfry Youth as they give their life to Jesus and know that they are welcomed into a church family, the family of God. Thank you. 
to Belfry Youth News. So this is it. The last time we're gonna lock the storehouse. What better way to leave this place than with a prayer? So God, I thank you for all you've done in this place. Jesus, thank you for all the lives saved, the healings we've seen in your name. Thank you for the lives changed. Thank you for the joy, the peace, the sanctuary, the worship. Thank you for your provision. And as we leave this place, Lord, help us to remember all those amazing moments and to treasure every single one of them. Thank you for all the volunteers and the team that have worked here over the years. Thank you for every young person that's walked through the door. Thank you for everything. Lord, may this place, even when we leave, always be known as a place of peace. Amen. Sing this together. People come together, strangers, neighbors, our blood has one. Children, generations of every nation. Don't let your heart be troubled Hold your head up, I don't fear no evil Fox your eyes on this one truth God is madly in love with you Take courage, hold on, be strong Remember where our help comes from oh, we see
sing this. Swing wide. You swing wide. Oh, you heavens, let the praise go up as the waters come down. Oh, creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. All his children, clean hands, pure heart, good grace, good God. Jesus. Oh, we sing out, swing wide, swing wide. Oh, you heavens, let the praise go up as the walls come down. Oh, creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. All oh, these children, clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. So we're going to sing that again. Swing wide, oh, you heavens. the team for all you've done to help lead us in worship this morning. Uh, I'm going to finish with a short blessing uh, and I look forward to seeing you either this evening at our worship night uh, or one of our events in the week or even next Sunday. So uh, let's pray as we leave. Uh, Father we thank you that we have been able to worship you in freedom this morning. We pray that by your spirit you would fill us up to overflowing, that wherever we go, uh, we would spread your good news and your love to those we meet. And we pray that now in Jesus' name. Amen.